I'm Rachel for Trovo, and today we're sitting down with Elamir. We're Hello. doing a monthly special to help y'all get to know your local DJs a little bit better. And today we're sitting down with him to discuss his new mix for Trovo, which by the way is amazing, and it's going to be linked in with this video so y'all will get to hear it. And we're also going to ask him a little bit about the music scene in Houston. So Elamir, how long have you been DJing? Uh, man, I don't even know. I feel like I started long ago, but it hasn't been that long, honestly. Um, let's see, I picked up my first Dex. It was just a controller for my laptop back in 2011. And I didn't get my first gig till 2012. So it's kind of still Where was your first gig at? Uh, God, where was it? I don't, oh, Numbers, actually, of all places. Numbers? Oh, yeah. that's a really old school club yeah. in Houston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the person who got it for me, uh, it was actually Jake Hunter. He was the one who, uh, who was okay, able to. Okay, yeah, I know him. Yeah, and uh, I, I still remember that, like where he told me it was supposed to be at a certain time and then I was I agreed to it and it was like an early slot but then I was like oh man I don't know if I can do it uh, because of, you know work and all that uh, and I'm not really at that point I wasn't coming to Houston that much I was still in Katy so um, he's like all right so he switched with me so he gave me the quote unquote headlining spot oh yeah so I was like all right cool so I, <laughs> I showed up with my laptop and my controller and I just started like a few months ago and I like started playing and all that and, uh, I remember people liked it, so I was like, alright, cool, I felt good about it, but at the same time, I was just like, alright, it's still my first gig, like, I'm not gonna let it go to my head. You well, your I mean? first gig was a headlining gig, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't look at it at that point, I was just like, ah, I just, it was one of those, like, the time slot changed, because I was just like, because I agreed to it, when I shouldn't have, yeah. so I was just like, uh, okay, but everything worked out, and now it's like, now look where I'm at now. So what actually got you into DJing in the first place? Um, well, it kind of backtrack uh, for me. It was uh, loving the music in the first place. Like for me, I started with trance, and the reason why I started with trance is it helped me develop and grow as like a person. Like back when I discovered it, I was very simply put, I was in a dark place. So when I started listening to it, it kind of gave me hope for like a better future that's awesome and then i realized i was like you know what if it can help me change my character to become a better person i'm sure other people can feel the same way so that was like my main goal and that's always been my goal is like to play music because i enjoy it and because it may help someone you know because we don't because everyone goes to these shows everyone listens to music and they have different reasons for it you know like i listen to trance because i have that emotional connection to it but someone else might listen to like dubstep or something because it, it reminds them of a happier time and that's why I wanted to do it because it, it and I think above and beyond probably put it best with the group therapy album where they said everyone shows up to a show for different reasons for different songs but they leave with the same experience and they, everyone ends up being like you know happy so there's that group therapy so that's where I, I kind of like where I decided to go forward where I was just like you know what I want to do it because I want to see people you know happy I want to see people to, like I've been to a dark place and I don't want people to be in that place. So that means that I can make or play some sort of music where it helps someone, you know, like move forward, help someone out of a dark place, then my job is done. That's really amazing. That's a yeah. great reason to do what you do, it really is. Yeah, because I look past the fame. Like I, don't, I really don't care about the fame, honestly. Like it's more about that passion for the music and helping. Yeah, I agree. At the same time. So music's all about it changes lives. Yeah. Now speaking yeah. of changing lives, we both work at a club that changes mm -hmm. a lot of lives. Work at we both work at one of the biggest nightclubs in the United States, Stereo Live. Can you tell me how it's been working for Stereo Live? Tell me all about it. Um, it's actually been the probably the best thing that's happened to me. I remember when I first started, it was one of those I was kind of iffy about it, where I was just like, oh, man, I don't know if I should do this. Like, you know, working during the day and then going there at night, just screwing up my sleep schedule and all that. It was, uh, I don't know, it was that decision where I'm like, okay, you know what, let me just see how this goes. And let's see, I started December 2011, so just a couple months after I started DJing, I started there. And I realized, that's nice, that's nice. yeah, I realized at that point where I'm like, you know what, maybe I could see where this takes me. You know, just do what I need to do as like a ticket agent or promoter or whatever and see where it takes me as a DJ. And in the past five years or so, it's like, it's honestly the best decision I made to stay with them because it's opened up so many you know, new doors. I've been able to meet so many people. I met you for stereo. I met uh, like 
some of my closest friends, like my, my best friend who moved to Prague recently, I'm gonna go visit her. I met her at Stereo. Um, I actually and, met some of my best friends at Stereo too, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I met the, uh, I met all these amazing people and I've been able to get some amazing opportunities out of it. So I've, I've you know, been able to play other places as well. Uh, I was able to play in Dallas last year. I got to open up for Ben Golden Protoculture at Lizard Lounge a week after nice, they played at Stereo. Nice. So, you know, uh, what was the other one? 2015, which this still kind of stings and kind of hurts where they put me on something like Atlanta and then it got rained out. Uh, so I woke up knowing that I won't be able to play at something like it. But I mean, it's all right. So it happens. Um, like, I'm not super upset, but it was just one of those like, dang, I was dang, oh, so close. But, you know, stuff like that in the short amount of time that I've been there. Uh, well, I feel like it's been a short amount of time, but in that time that I've been there, I it helped me, you know, grow. It helped me develop you know as a person and it kind of made me think of both like as shows and as both a fan and a business perspective it's like why do certain decisions get made mm -hmm. but also what do fans want out of it exactly. so i learned i learned that but then i was also able to through you know people that i met there i've been able to meet djs that i enjoy you know like listening to and looking up to like for example uh, a couple months ago, uh, I went to Dream State SoCal, um, which for me, that's a big deal. It's like having all trans, you know, festival that was amazing. And through someone that I know, uh, they were able to give me a backstage pass. So oh, I was nice. able to hang out with all these DJs. And that's something I did, honestly, I don't want to gloat about it. Like, cause I, cause I hate gloating kind of sort of, but I it's still of an do. awesome experience, yeah. especially for somebody who's actually in the music scene. Yeah. And so like being able to meet all these people that I've looked up to for years and listened to is just. The, for me has been like the most amazing experience and, and that wouldn't have happened if I didn't really stay at stereo now it's like okay like I've, I've been at stereo long enough now it's like let me look past it like I still love them I'll still go but now it's like I'm going less because now I'm trying to prioritize trying to balance like a nine to five job and trying to do this and trying to build like a music career it's like uh, okay what do I do so I, something's got to give and so uh, yeah, it's like that's that's the main thing I've learned. I've met the most amazing people. I've met my closest friend, and I've met all the DJs you can imagine. And they and some of them have given me some very sound advice and some like contact and in, in way like where I can get in touch with them. Like, hey, you know, like here's some something I made. Would you can you critique it and stuff? And they they'd be nice enough to do it. It's always a great experience. Yeah. So speaking of something wicked, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's the biggest festival we have so far in Houston besides Middlelands coming up, but. You know, I'm loyal to our night culture festivals, but how do you feel about the music industry in Houston? It's, um, it's growing. Like, it, well, music as in like all of music? Just EDM. Or, and, just EDM? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I've seen is, uh, and keep in mind, I'm still kind of new to the scene. So from what I've seen is that it's, um, it's, it's growing a lot. Like, uh, you have... You have Stereo that's bringing all these, you know, big names as well as, you know, these names that don't get enough attention down here. And then you got all these other clubs that are doing the same thing, that are bringing all these DJs. And then they have like, you know, the EDM nights and, you know, all this and, and so on. And then you have the the shows that put on uh, the locals, you know, they who get their time to shine. And it's, I, I never would have thought of this years ago, because when I went to my first show, and actually the first year where I started going to shows, uh, it was just, we had a show every month, not every month, but like every, there was like a show and then we had to wait maybe a, a month or two before the next show. And now it's like, there's something going on every single every weekend, weekend, which is insane. I never would have thought that would have happened. And it's like, for it to do that is just amazing. So it's like seeing Houston grow as far as electronic music has been phenomenal. And, and I love to see that. And like, I, I know there's like that competitiveness between everyone. But at the end of the day, I think that's a good thing because yeah. the, the who wins is the people, the fans. The fans. Yeah, they, exactly. they end up winning because they get to see all these DJs. So they could see, you know, someone at, uh, at one club one night and the next night they can see someone at stereo. The next night they can see someone else. And it's like in one weekend, they can see three different artists for, you know, with three different genres. And like they don't have to pay that much because as far as like Houston goes compared to other cities, Houston's pretty cheap. Yeah, we're pretty reasonable. Yeah, it's like you go you go to other like major, uh, you know, big cities and like some of these um, smaller names that you see here, you'll have to pay like double the price. 
Yeah, no offense to Webster, I was just out of New York and paid fifty dollars for somebody's first ever show. Yeah. So. <laughs> so it's 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 phenomenal to see like how where Houston is going, like the direction it's going, and it, and it's great. I I absolutely love it. And there's a big variety, which is even better. It's like you have your you have your big room, you have your dubstep trap, and so on. But then now you're starting to see more. Uh, more people pay attention to techno. I mean, techno has always been there. The there's always, Atlanta. yeah, and then there's other shows as well. But now there's more, like, uh, more, I don't want to say focus on techno, but there's a lot of people paying attention to it. Same thing goes with trance, and same thing goes with, you know, a lot of other music. So, I mean, we're heading in the right direction. And I think Texas as a whole is heading in the right direction. I, I think there was an article, I, I didn't get a chance to read it, saying that Texas may be the new home for for electronic music. So Especially like, with all these festivals migrating over. over yeah, there. it's like, because it, you got to think of Houston and Dallas and Austin and El Paso. El Paso is pretty big too. Yeah. They, they get some amazing shows. Amazing. Yeah, and some amazing, uh, they have, you know, Sun City out there. So it's like Texas in, in, in general is just heading in this like amazing direction, which I would love to see more of. Me too. Yeah. So you actually made a mix for Trovo mm -hmm. and it's, it's great. I got to hear it guys, it's really good. Can you tell us about this mix? Uh, yeah, it actually all started, um, the inspiration came from the, when I mentioned Dream State, uh, I wanted to go see um, Mark Sherry, who's been one of my favorite producers for many, many years, and he, uh, he does more tech trance, so it's more like the heavy hitting kind of trance, it's not side trance, but it's like kind of heavy hitting, um, and he made a song that I heard live, I think he de debuted at Dream State, where it was trance, and then it goes into drum and bass, and then it goes back down to trance. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, this is, okay, I, I really like this. Interesting. Yeah, and, and then hearing it live for the first time, I was like, okay, this, this is, yeah, I love that. So that was like my main inspiration. I'm like, well, if he can do trance and drum and bass, why not just do a whole mix out of it? You know, it's like, I didn't see a lot of backlash against it. Like with, with, the, with the trance family, and, and I'm sorry I have to say this, they, they're very, very vicious when it comes <laughs> to trance. So they'll... They love their trance, but if someone changes it just a little bit, they just bite their head off. Yeah. And I and the reason why I, I think people do that is because trance there's that emotional connection. It's like pure. Yeah, it's it's like it it, it like I was saying before, trance got me in a place where I was you know it, it took me out of this dark place, and that's why I have that emotional connection. But at the same time, I understand it's music, and music evolves over time. So some people they they don't want it to evolve, which is fine. I mean, it's, it's gonna happen. Uh, but seeing trance and drum and bass go together, I was like, all right, that's, that's pretty cool. I was like, let me give this a shot. So that's why I was like, all right, let me, since when you asked me, I was like, well, since, you know, Trovo is catered more towards, uh, like a bass heavy crowd. So far, we're going to try to be very well-rounded guys, but so far, yes. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Let me, let me take that as a challenge. Let me, let me see where I can go from there. So that, so I started it off with trance. So like tech trance and side trance, and then using that song that mark sherry song uh i went into the drum and bass and then i stayed at drum and bass the rest of the time now that I, i'm so uh, i'll be honest i'm so glad i did this because i did learn a lot from it so now i like I, I learned how to like uh i'm not very familiar with looping songs but i learned how to do that and then th there's more to it that, that i learned but it, it was a good learning experience and i think overall it was just nice to hear something like completely from going from one genre to the next you know? well we really love the mix and we hope that y'all love it too and he challenged himself and he definitely met the challenge guys thank you so much for tuning into trilbo i hope you love the mix i hope you love what we're doing keep supporting us merch coming soon stickers coming soon and visit us also at stereo live where i'll be there every weekend thank you elamir mm -hmm. thank you bye y'all